And welcome everybody. Haven't done one of these really before, but with the GM4000, definitely need to do some type of presentation. So I had the Sim120 prior. Uh, that's this tripod is the 360 tripod for the, the Sim120. And I always like doing size differences. The Sim120 is a pretty big beast. Here's that next to the GM4000. Of course, the SIM120 mount is pretty manageable. It's probably about 60-ish pounds. Whereas this one, that dolly is a 300-pound lifting dolly. And that's how I got it up on here. This mount's probably a little over 200 pounds. Uh, it's going to be carrying the CDK 24 inch plane wave. Uh, I've currently sent the base or the tri -pure tripod, the pier adapter, uh, out to ATS. That's the pier manufacturer company. I'm going to get them to build one of these tri piers, the 12 inch size one though, the outside diameter, so it's going to be a lot bigger. And I want to use that in the backyard uh, with the far future thinking that I may make it more mobile. So I don't want to sit here in the backyard. Uh, maybe if I go to one of the star parties, it's like a week long. I could throw all this stuff in the truck with like a crane and take it out to those places. A little bit different. And these would probably be instruments in a professional observatory. But I ended up getting the CK24 for a good price. And then this was actually the first astronomy piece that I bought brand new. Uh, that ran about 32,000. But everything's beefier. <laughs> look at these, look at that shaft. This is the 4,000 and then this is the Sim 120. Like uh, you can fit this inside there basically. <laughs> but this big old thing, it's gonna carry six uh, counterweights. And I actually was able to fit a couple of uh, bolts in there to hold that while I do this. So you get that locked in just a little bit. We'll unlock these so we know we're not doing anything against warranty because anytime you're moving this thing, you need to have it unlocked. And then once I put it up here, I locked it up so it wouldn't move anywhere. I found it easier to get this threaded in first uh, with it locked and then I would unlock it because this thing just keeps going. But I'm not going to really add any counterweights or anything to it. Uh, but I mean, it doesn't really need it. You can see here's that AM5 for size reference as well. But it's uh, Pretty smooth. Of course, it should be smooth, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and move this a little. So that is this ring here. The interesting thing with this one for locking and unlocking is it's a pretty big switch, but then it goes just enough to where it doesn't lock, and then you gotta kind of move it one way or another you hear it clunk and then you can finish locking it in it's the same way with this one you click it all the way and then you move it a little bit more and then that's locked both these are locked now all the connections are very solid there's a nice piece where you input the connectors in and then finish with the threads so it actually is a connector fit for it. As you can see this keypad's very pretty large and beefy. Comes in a nice packet. It's a phone for reference. And overall it's just a very large and capable unit. I'm gonna end up doing uh, 
I didn't get the wireless option or GPS. I may end up doing GPS later. Uh, just depending on how much I move. And then of course here's the counterweights for these things. This is a 44 pound counterweight. And I said I'm probably gonna, I bought six, uh, but I, we'll see how it balances out. I just didn't want to buy a whole one counterweight from in Italy, especially since this thing took uh, probably like a month and a half for the production and then about a month for shipping. This thing is very, everything is basically steel except like the cover plates and even those are like aluminum. That's the fastest it slews. It's supposed to be slower than the 200 and a 3 or the 2000 and a 3000. Let's see if it has. Yeah, I'm very excited to have this thing actually here now. It's got like a startup to it and then it starts ramping up. There's a lot more settings in here as well to get the latitude right. If you have to go farther down, you can move these down more. Uh, it was definitely a battle between the L600 for the plane wave and then this GM4000 for the telescope. Uh, I ended up going with this just more so because uh, it's related to like the equatorial type mount instead of like the L mount. It's uh, a lot different. Uh, some people will say that since you have them up in Illinois that it's probably better to have them. But uh, I was kindly told that the shop over here in the U.S. for the, the 10 micron is very good. Other than that, I mean, pretty easy to kind of see the rest of the stuff online as far as the capabilities for this, but it's what, 300, 300 pounds capable? Uh, it's got the pass through here, you can get a nice rubber boot here so it keeps everything out if you don't have anything. But I'll be running a uh, USB 3.0 and a power cable through here. Uh, then you just take off this one of these pieces right here and then just slide it in. And then I do have big dovetail. So this is the dovetail clamp for the CDK24. And that'll go right on there. Wires will come up underneath. It's got like the three locking pins for that. I may look at doing something else because I don't know as far as one, just these three little pen rings holding the, it's like, I think the the telescope's about 230 pounds as well. It's about the same as this. And I think the only other interesting thing was this is the 24 volt DC, so the power adapter is a little different. Uh, most of the other adapters I have are just the 12 volt. So it's going to be a little, a little hard to get used to. Yeah, I was kind of surprised I got it up on this, this tripe here. Fifteen. 
AM5 in the bottom here. This AM5 carries the 100 millimeter lunt in the back over there. I do both solar and uh, deep sky for that one. It's the modular one I can change. And then I have the CK 12 and a half that goes with the SIM 120. Yeah, uh, I made a thread on cloudy nights as far as just my journey into going into this. Uh, like I said, the next step is just waiting for the pier. That should be coming in the end of September, as well as the end of September. I have, I can't remember the company, but they're in Arizona as well. I think in Tucson, maybe. Uh, supposed to come over here and look at building a roll off roof uh, for the backyard. And that'll really just be for this big one. Uh, as I usually take the 12 and a half with me everywhere, like in the field to different parks for our star parties. Uh, yeah, it's not really anything else for here. I mean, it's got uh, external switch in here, landing cables, GPS, guider, auxiliary. As well as the RS-232, like I said, I'm going to learn how to do the Ethernet cable that way. Uh, this thing says battery, so there might be a, another battery in here, which would be interesting to see. But just the, the finish of this mount is so much different than any other thing I've seen or like messed with before. I think uh, Roro did a GM-1000, he just was feeling going everywhere. <laughs> I mean, this is just a very beefy and amazing mount. And that's really all I got for this video. Thanks for stopping by if you did.